Laboratory Activity 1.3 is about contour lines. As we mentioned in Lab Activity 1.2, a good earth scientist not only knows about earth science facts and how to do science, but also knows how to get around on the earth, move from one place to the other, and get a feel for just how the earth changes, how the features change, and how mountains and volcanoes and valleys are shaped. And in Lab Activity 1.2, we worked with some topographic maps, and you saw all the little curvy lines on there. Those are contour lines. And one reason those are helpful is if you're navigating across the earth to get from one point to the other, you want to know how steep the terrain is. And the closer the contour lines are together, the steeper the terrain. It's as simple as that. Contour lines are called isopleths. Iso means same. A lot of scientific terms start with that prefix, iso. So as soon as you see that, you know you're talking about things that are similar. So contour lines are isopleths, or lines of equal measure. And on topographic maps, isopleths are measuring lines of equal altitude above sea level. And they're also on bathymetric or nautical charts. They're lines of equal depth instead of equal altitude. So in this lab activity, you have a contour model kit. And if you're doing this lab activity with your own equipment, then go ahead and get that contour line kit or contour model kit and the other equipment that you need. You're going to draw contour lines on this and learn how to make a profile. Topographic maps, they give you a top view of you looking down. So a profile is like a side view. And so we'll use the data from an actual topographic map to make a profile as well. And then you'll learn to make a profile using Google Earth. So just some basic instructions here. In your container, you'll put your model in there and you'll fill the container in half centimeter increments. And each new water line is marking an isopleth. And so you'll mark that location with a crayon. And then when you get to the top, you'll measure the highest point or the last point submerged and mark that with an X. And when you're finished, just make sure you do not throw away the container. You're going to need that for several other laboratory activities. So let's look at some photographs of this. And just so you know, there's a couple of reasons I use photographs instead of a full motion video. One of the reasons is because it saves memory. The videos load faster and run better. Another reason is because I think it's less distracting than having a lot of things moving around on the screen. You have one picture and I can zoom in on it. I use a high resolution camera. And if you put your ruler up to the screen right now, you would be able to see that the ruler that's on the screen is zoomed in but it's still nice and clear you can see the marks and everything and so having that still photo that it just helps me point clearly to different things that I want to describe and right now I want to show you how to make your half centimeter marks and so notice I have that ruler right at the bottom of the clear plastic and so then you can take a crayon you could also use a sharpie pen and just make marks half one one and a half two two and a half, three, and so on. And then like you could number the whole numbers, one, two, three, like that. You don't have to number everything. Make sure you do centimeters, don't do the inch side. And when you're done, it should look something like this. And you're going to make contour lines on here and then eventually make a profile. And you can actually see the profile of this since I've got it sitting on its side and this volcano shape comes up and then down and around. Your kit may not be a volcano, it may just be like a mountain or something else, but it should have the same general idea here. Next, you just want to take your pitcher of water and start filling it up. And you want to fill it up to a point where at least you're going to have some contours to map. And I'm at around two centimeters right there. And if you look at this side view here, you can see this flat side just from the mold that they use to make the feature. Fill it up until you can actually get a contour to draw. And something else too, you might want to set everything inside a cookie sheet and that will just prevent spills because you're going to fill this thing up pretty full with water and then to get that back over to a sink is going to be a little bit of a challenge without spilling anything. So setting it on a cookie sheet will help minimize some spills. And so now to draw your contours, all you do is just draw with the crayon along the edge of the water wherever it's touching you just kind of draw right along there and you can see I've already done one and that was the one where I first was able to see that I would be able to have a contour to draw it wasn't just along the sharp straight up and down edge over here 
Now remember, one thing contour lines tell us right away is if they're closely spaced, that's a steep section. When they're spaced far away, that's a fairly flat section. So this is a fairly flat level section right here. And then over on the left there, that's really steep. So just continue filling up, stopping every half centimeter, and drawing your contour lines around. And that highest spot, you'll want to mark that with an X on your model. When you're finished, take the model out and dry it off. And there's a top view, and yours should look similar to mine if you have the same volcano type model. And yours may have a couple of mistakes on it, like here my crayon slid down and had a little error there, so the contour really goes in that direction. Now what you want to do is redraw a top view of your contour lines. Just do that to the best of your ability and make some estimates, obviously. Then you'll make a profile through the highest point on your image. And so what you'll do there is you'll just draw a line that goes through your X and just a horizontal line. First, though, just try to do as good of a job as you can on putting your contour lines on that space provided and use these grids kind of as a guide to help direct you. So go ahead and get your contour lines drawn in that space provided. Once you get them all drawn, then you can make a profile. And what you'll do with that is first label your axis here from 0 to about 7 centimeters, 7 or 8. And if your kit is very similar to the one I have, then it should work out if you do these horizontal lines here in half centimeter increments. That should give you plenty of room. Then you'll take your ruler and Go over to the very far right there and where it intersects, where that horizontal line you do through your highest point, where it intersects your first contour line on the far right, just take your ruler and go perpendicular to that and down. And of course you have to know what your contour line's altitudes were and my first one was actually at 1.5. And so the next one was at 2 and then this one is at 2.5, 3 and so on. So at 1.5, you make an X. Then you go back to your contour model and where your line intersects the 2 centimeter contour line. Start at that intersection, go down to the 2 centimeter line on the profile, and then put an X. Then move on to 2.5 and, and go down and put an X. Go to 3. Go down, put an X. Now notice here the 3 centimeter line is also here, and it's also here. It kind of curves around, and that's okay. You can have more than one place that has the same altitude. Another place that's going to occur is on the outside and the inside of the cone of the volcano, because it's going to go up to a peak and then back down. So once you get all of your little X's drawn, then you can go ahead and basically connect the dots and so let's start on the left side there and obviously I already have that drawn but let's just go on up and just think about this you wouldn't want to just go across and connect the dots like that because obviously you can just look at this and tell that there's a peak in between those two but you need to be observant of those kinds of things and so you would go up and then back down and then the same inside the cone you want to go down and then to that X and then up that's your highest spot actually and then start going back down and then here for these three centimeter lines down here you'd want to dip down because you can look at it and see that there's a dip there but then there's a rise here between these threes so go ahead and make your profile well now in part two Let's make a profile from a real 1983 USGS topographic map, and this is of Mount St. Helens. If you know anything about Mount St. Helens, you know that it had a spectacular eruption in May of 1980, and then it's had several other eruptions since then, and you can see they have it labeled here the 1980 crater. Mount St. Helens looked a lot different before May of 1980, so the US Geological Survey had to go back in and redraw the topographic map for this region. So what I want you to do is draw a profile based off of this red line right here. And just like the volcano contour model kit, just keep in mind that there's going to be a peak here. And so you can see this says 8,180 and these are measured in feet. And so that's like the highest point and then it drops back down and then it drops back down going this way. 
And one thing I said is to draw the 200 foot intervals only. So look, this is 7,600 there, 7,800 there, 8,000 about right there, and then it starts dropping back down. So notice on the profile, I've labeled the 8,000 foot line for you. So this would be 78, 76, and so on. You might want to write down some numbers on there just to help you keep up with things. And something else to consider, this says 6,000 right here. So this must be 6,200 here. And then you can just count. The lighter lines are 40 feet apart. So 6,040, 6,080, 6,120, 6,160, 6,200. And so you can just count one, two, three, four. This must be 6,400 right there. So if this line is 8,000 right here, this must be 7,600 right here. And you can find your profile marks just like before. And so we just draw a vertical line straight up and down from the contour map down to the profile chart. And we just place an X there. Then we go to 7,800 where that intersects that red line. And we try to go straight up and down. And of course you want to use a ruler to make nice straight lines and then put an X. So go ahead and make your profile, then connect the X's to make the pattern. Well, hopefully your profile looks something like this, and you should have probably drawn a raised area there where the lava dome is, even though that doesn't go through the middle of the lava dome, we know it probably raises up a little bit because it's right on the edge. And remember, you based your profile off of this red line right here, now, if you would have made your profile right through here, it would have looked different. You would want to raise that lava dome up even more. But hopefully yours looks something like this with a peak over here on the right side, the, the highest point over on the right side. Because you can see this is close to 8,200 there, and this would be the 8,200 mark. Well, now let's move on to our last part on using Google Earth to make a profile. This time you can let Google Earth do the profile work for you. And you might be kind of annoyed with me that I showed you how to do it these other longer, more tedious ways first. But it's good to do things that way because if you don't have a computer around and you want to get a feel for the land, that's a good way to do it. So you'll need to open Google Earth. You'll need to fly to Mount St. Helens. Just type it in just like I have there. And then watch the video lab to learn how to make a profile using Google Earth. And you'll sketch your profile below. So I still have Google Earth at Dakavac Lake. Type in Mount St. Helens and hit enter and it should take you right on over there. And then you'll maybe want to zoom in a little bit more than what it shows. And go ahead and do that. Get a little closer, scoot it around so that lava dome is right there in the middle of your screen. And then just take a look at that. And that lava dome has changed some since 1983. And we're going to try to draw a line right through there. And so go to Add Path. And what you'll do is this window will pop up. And you're just going to click, kind of like you did on Terrago. You'll click on one side about where you think the right location would be. Go across, click on the left side and you should be able to have a little line come across. Sometimes you have to click once or more than once and finally get it to go. And there it is. Now notice a couple of things here. We're facing due north just like the topographic map was. So we know our orientation is about the same. And one thing I'm assuming this is the old lava dome right in here. And this is newer material right through here. And then notice the elevation right down here on the bottom, 7,404 feet. That's the elevation right over here on the left. When I clicked over here, I made sure it was about at 7,400 feet as well. And the reason I did that was because on our topographic map, we started those around 7,600 feet on the outside. And that just gave me a little bit more room to make sure I had all the elevations in there. So now you have a path. And what you can do is you can name it if you want to, like Mount St. Helens Path, and hit OK. And then it will save in your Google Earth. And just click OK on it. Then go up to it and right click on it. And go down to Show Elevation Profile, click, and boom, there's your elevation profile. 
and you can just slide back and forth. And you can see this red dot here at 7611. That's showing the location of the arrow. So basically the profile is backwards. Ideally, I would have made my first click on this side, the second click over here. But if you just think of this being reversed, then you can see, you know, just like before we had the highest profile, this side right here corresponds with this edge and this peak right here. And that makes sense. That was the highest on our topographic map profile, and it's the highest on the Google Earth profile. So one thing you might want to do is just right click on the path again and delete the path. And you'll see the option come up for that. And then go back to add path, start on this side, and then go over, stop on the right side. Then your profile will look the same. It won't be in reverse. Then what you can do is just take your Google Earth image and you can move around on there too just to kind of see your elevations and just kind of check on things but look at what I'm doing there I'm stretching the window out more and you can just take your paper and put it on your computer screen and if you stretch and move your Google Earth window you can get the profile to match the chart size on your lab paper and then you can just trace the profile on there so go ahead and trace your contour in and answer the questions that are listed below. Okay, well hopefully your profile looks something like this. I just reversed the image that I just showed you. I just reversed it around, so that's why these altitudes are backwards. So some similarities. I had the same up-down pattern, um, similar maximum and minimum altitudes. A maximum over on the right, close to 8,000 feet. Minimum over on the left. Some differences were the highest point on the Google Earth profile that I had anyway was a little bit lower. Now, if yours wasn't low, if yours was higher, that's fine. That just means maybe you did your path in a little different location than I did. And we're not trying to all have the exact same location here, but something similar. Now, the bottom on the topographic map, that was about 100 feet lower than what I had on the Google Earth profile. And you can see it's raised up a lot more than the topographic map profile was. And then question four, some reasons that we had similarities was just a simple reason we drew the profiles in similar locations. And it's the same mountain. And differences were because the locations weren't exactly the same and also the USGS map was drawn in 1983. And the lava dome has grown and changed since then. You could just do an internet search, type in Mount St. Helens Lava Dome, and you'll find some information about how it's changed since 1983. Well, now that you know how to make a profile on Google Earth, you don't have to stop the lab activity now. You can go back and maybe make a profile through your hometown, through some place that you're interested in, like maybe the Grand Canyon. That would have an interesting profile through it. Apply what you've learned here in a new situation. Okay, well that's all for Lab Activity 1.3.